Agnes Moorhead in The General's Wife on the Cavalcade of America, sponsored by the DuPont Company, maker of better things for better living through chemistry. But first, here is Gain Whitman. Let me ask you a question. Does your raincoat fail to keep you dry because the water repellent disappeared when your coat was cleaned? It wouldn't have disappeared if the coat you bought had carried the tag marked DuPont Zeeland Durable Repellent Finish. Because unlike ordinary water repellents, Zeeland will not come out at the laundry or dry cleaners. Rainwear, sportswear, or children's clothes treated with Zeeland do not need reprocessing. Zeeland, it's one of the DuPont Company's better things for better living through chemistry. <laughs> The DuPont Company presents The General's Wife, starring Agnes Moorhead as Margaret, with William Johnstone as Zachary Taylor, on The Cavalcade of America. It is summer of the year 1810. A young woman, pretty, delicate, very much in love with a young lieutenant, strolls through the garden of a home in Kentucky, the lieutenant by her side. It is this night that begins Margaret McCall Smith's life with Zachary Taylor. A life filled with romance, danger, hardships, and a tender love. Shall we sit down here, Lieutenant? If you wish, Mistress May. If I may say so, Mistress May, that gown is most becoming. Oh, it's just an old one. It's nothing special. Isn't the garden beautiful? Not half so beautiful as you. Oh, oh Lieutenant, you flatter me. But do go on. Mistress Meg, I, I wish I could ask the privilege of keeping company with you. Well, aren't you going to? The Army's sending me to Fort Hamilton in Ohio. Oh, no. I mean, for how long? Well, the Army, one can never tell. Mistress Meg, I, I know I have no right to ask. Yes? I realize that we haven't known each other very long and that I'm only a lieutenant. But I'll be a captain shortly. You will? Yes. President Madison is my second cousin, and he wrote me about the promotion. Oh, that's splendid. And so I... I wonder if I may ask you, if I dare to ask you... Yes? Could I have a small portrait of you to take with me to Fort Hamilton? Oh. Law, Lieutenant, I'm afraid I don't have a portrait of myself. Not even a miniature? No. Uh, to be sure, I could have one painted and sent out to you, but... Yes? Oh, Lieutenant... Would you consider taking the original instead? Maggie. Maggie, you mean that you... Yes, Zachary. I should be so very happy to be your wife. Well, Mrs. Taylor, there it is up ahead. Fort Hamilton. Oh. It looks lonely. Lonely? Oh, no, Zach. How can it be lonely? We have each other. Oh, I know, Meg, but after all, you've left behind all the fancy wedding gifts and your pretty belongings. Oh, nonsense. I didn't leave everything behind. We've got my little cherry wood rocking chair. <laughs> Why that, Meg? Oh, Zach, remember the first night you met me? I'll never forget it. <laughs> I was sitting on that chair rocking back and forth to squeak so that it embarrassed me. <laughs> you said it ought to be fixed, and we both laughed, and now here we are. <laughs> Meg, I, I hope you'll like it here. But an army post is a drab place with few comforts and no luxuries. Zach. Yes? Our marriage ceremony wasn't quite complete. It wasn't? No. I should have taken another vow. I'm taking it now, Zach. Whither thou goest, I will go. And where thou lodgest, I will lodge. Forever and a day. <laughs> Is that? Well, that's the oh. first time I've heard you cussing. Oh, Zach, I'm sorry. But look what's happening in your dress shirt. Oh, there, there. Oh. I know just how you feel. Oh. But you won't have to put up with this kind of life much longer. Oh, well, it isn't as if you had another dress shirt. I... What do you mean, Zach? Well, it looks as if we're going to have trouble with the British. 
Oh, Jack. Anyway, the Army's sending me to take charge of Fort Harrison. I'll start packing. No, Meg, no, you can't go with me. Not this time. An Army post is no place for a woman with a threat of war just around the corner. But, Jack... And an Army post, even without war, is no place for a woman to have a baby. Oh, now you listen to me, Zach Taylor. I don't need pampering. I told you... I've roughed it here with you for months, and if you think I'm not going with you, you can just think again. I'm going to send you back to your sister. Jack, I'm not a bale of cotton to be packed up and shipped off just like that. But, Meg, Besides, if Fort Harrison's all right for you, it's all right for me. But you need care, comfort. You need so many things. Oh, my dearest, it's no use trying to talk me out of it. You're a soldier, Zach. I'm a soldier's wife, and our children will be born on an army post. Zach. Hmm? Yes, me. You were reading that letter for the fifth time. What is it? Can't be bad news. The war's been over since Christmas. Uh, well, I have to have that rocker fixed. Squeak something wrong. We're not talking about the rocker. Are you going to tell me what it is? I... Well, what would you say if I told you I was tired of Army life? You tired of the Army? Oh, no. I know you too well for that. Me? <laughs> I've resigned my commission. Zach Taylor. Mm-hmm. And this letter is the official acceptance. You? But why, Zach? There's why? one very important reason. We ought to have a family. And this time, I'm going to be sure you have the proper care. Oh, but it wasn't the Army's fault we lost our baby. Well, maybe not, Meg, but maybe we ought to try civilian life for a while. What do you say? Zach, you love the Army. Soldiering is in your blood and bone. You'll never be truly happy away from it. Oh, nonsense. Of course I will. It'll be strange at first. Strange for both of us. Well, I... But, Meg, for the first time, we'll have a real home. We'll live like civilized people. Our children will be born where there are doctors and nurses to look after them. And you, Meg... Well, what about you... me, darling? Why, you'll have all the things you've wanted for four long years. Oh, my darling, Zach, I've had all the things I've wanted. But if it'll make you happy to try civilian life, well, I'm game for it. <laughs> Meg, did you hear that? She said something. And why shouldn't she be talking already? Isn't she the only daughter of the Army's most brilliant May, young men? Meg, please. Well, How many times have I have to tell you that I don't want you to talk about the Army? It no longer interests or concerns oh, me. Oh, of course it doesn't. That's right. <clears throat> now, uh, oh, Meg. Uh, yes, Zachary? I don't think I mentioned that uh, the Captain Rogers is coming to see me this evening, did I? Captain Rogers? Oh, from Fort Harrison? Yeah, that's him, remember? Great fella, good soldier. Oh, he's a very good soldier. You and he were good friends. Yeah, too. lots of good men at Fort Harrison. Yes, Jack, lots of them. And they loved you, Mary. I love them. Well, that's in the past. Now, look, darling, I've got to run down in the rig and get Rogers. All right, Jack, you go right ahead. I won't be long. Then all three of us can talk over old times. Huh? Uh-huh. Old times. Yes, yes, Sarah, I think your father's getting restless. Nancy! Nancy! Did you call me, ma'am? Yes, Nancy. Please fetch me my writing board. Writing board? Yes, sir. There's a very important letter that has to be written. Sarah, yeah, you know I've got to write that letter, don't you? He won't. Here's the writing board, ma'am. Is there anything else? No, no thanks, Nancy. And so, Mr. President, should you see fit to recommission Zachary in the rank of major, I'm sure he'd accept. You know how stubborn he is, so if you discuss the matter with him, kindly omit my part in this. With affectionate regards to you and Mrs. Madison, I can... Listen to this letter from the president. It is? Uh -huh. Did he say anything about... I, I mean, what does he say? Well, listen, listen. What? Since reviewing your excellent army record, I have come to the conclusion that you are the man we need to take command of Fort Howard in Wisconsin. Is that so? Would you consider returning to the army in the rank of major? Oh. If so, reply by return post, and I will set the wheels in motion. What do you think of that? Oh, Zach, that's wonderful. And so unexpected. Yes. I... 
I'm a little mixed up. Jack, you, you sit right down at the desk. Huh? And write your acceptance letter. You've got an hour till the next post. I'll make arrangements to sell the furniture. All but my rocker. Now, wait, I'll... Meg, wait. But... We spent so much time choosing and fixing things. And this house and Sarah. Well, she's uh, only a year Jack, old. don't be a stubborn, obstinate fool. We're soldiers, all three of us. We're going back into the army. <laughs> Meg, I, uh, I think we'll have to take down those new curtains. Take them down? Oh, where are we going this time? Fort David. Well, Fort David was nice, Jack, but maybe the new post will be just as nice. Even nicer. Why don't you and the children go back to Kentucky? Zach, remember, whither thou goest, I will go, and where thou lodgest, I will lie. No, well, we shouldn't have moved out tonight, Meg. We shouldn't oh, have. Oh, nonsense. You had your order. There was nothing else to do. But the children, Stop dear. Zach. They're husky as army mules and twice as tough. If the army moves in a storm, so do the army's children. It's true, every word of it. This time we can nail down the carpet and bolt the coffee grinder to the wall. Baton Rouge in Louisiana is going to be our permanent post. Well, I'll be golden. Meg, you got to stop cussing. Oh, look who's talking. The man with the strongest vocabulary in the army tells me to stop swearing. Well, when I cuss, it's a different thing. But it ain't fitting for you, Meg. Mm. You're a woman. You know, Zach, sometimes during the last 30 years, I've almost forgotten that. But what about Baton Rouge? We'll stay there for good, Meg. It'll be a real home. You'll love it. Oh, a real home. Zach, what will it feel like? How'll it be? <laughs> You'll find out, darling. Uh, there'll be no more of this. Instead, there'll be magnolias. Real drapes and curtains instead of oil paper. Rugs. Lovely furniture. <laughs> oh, Zach. Now I'm going to have to learn to be a lady all over again. party's a huge success. Well, thank you. I I'm glad you're enjoying yourself. Well, I declare, Cypress Grove is just the loveliest plantation in the state. You're darn right. <clears throat> I, oh, yes, thank you, Mrs. Hardy. The general and I have tried to make it so. Pardon me, ladies. Oh, oh, thank you, me, General. Ming, I'd like to speak to you. Yes. Uh, will you excuse us, ladies? Of course. Oh, Jack, it's something wrong. Did I shock somebody? I I've been watching my tongue all evening. I didn't cuss once. I don't think. <laughs> No, Meg, you're wonderful. But uh, let's go outside in the front gallery, huh? Oh, Zach, look at the river. It's all silver in the moonlight. Mm. Meg, you like it here at Cypress Grove? Like it? Oh, Zach, I love it. It's the most beautiful home a woman could dream of. Only, only it isn't a dream. It's real. And we're going to be here together for a long time. Zach, why are you looking at me like that? I, um, uh, I just got orders. Orders? Yeah. May have war with Mexico. I've been ordered to Texas. Is it cold in Texas? Will we need heavy underwear? You won't, Meg. Because you're staying right here. I... Uh, 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 this is our permanent home, and I'm not going to let you pull up stakes again. I'm not going to have Zach, you... Zach, we're going to Texas together. And that's an order, General. For listening to Agnes Moorhead with William Johnstone in The General's Wife on the Cavalcade of America, sponsored by the DuPont Company. Maker of better things for a better living through chemistry. As the second part of our story opens, Meg and Zachary Taylor have gone to Texas. The Mexican War has broken out. We find Meg waiting for General Taylor to return as the door bursts open. Oh, if all that comes from dead, blame poppycock I've ever heard, this is the worst. What's troubling you? 
I just got orders to withdraw my troops from Buena Vista here. You don't like that? Well, there's good sense to them. Mexicans outnumber us three to one. Got artillery, You've but... You've got a hundred yard attack, is that it? Granted, make we're soldiers, not just pieces on a chessboard. We've got to fight with guts as well as brains. Even if we're outnumbered, we've got to be rough and ready for anything. Oh, rough and ready. Zach, you go out there and talk like that to your men, and there'll be a victory here. Stop. By thunder, I'll do it. Lieutenant! Yes, General? Have assembly sounded. Get the men together. I'm going to talk to him. <laughs> say about you. I... Oh, excuse me. I, I, I didn't know you had a visitor. Well, I'm glad you came in. Meg, this is Mr. Donald Willard. Oh, welcome to Cypress Grove, sir. Thank you, Miss Taylor. Mr. Willard represents the Whig Party, and Meg... Uh, um, may I tell her, Mr. Willard? Certainly, General. The Whig Party wants me to be their candidate for the President of the United States. Pre- president? But Zach isn't a politician. He's a soldier. That's just the point. With General Taylor in the White House, this nation will be assured of an administration free from petty politics. But Jack doesn't want to be president. He wants to settle down and enjoy life. Home life for a change. Miss Taylor, I understand and respect such a desire. But the country needs a man of honesty and integrity and courage. The general is that man. I'm a wicked, selfish old woman. I know it. But please, please don't let Zach be elected president. All these years, you've seen fit to let me lead my life by his side. And if he gets to be president, he'll have no time for me. And he's all I have. We're old, Zach and me. What years are left to us, we want to pack together. Please let him be defeated, Lord. So we can stay at Cypress Grove. Please, Lord. May. May, it's over. I've won. I've won. Oh, Zach, that's that's fine. That's fine. Congratulations, Mr. President. I've got to go back now. The newspapers want a statement. And they want to see you, too. Well, I'll I'll be with you in a minute. All right, dear. Uh, Don't be long now. It's, It's all right, Lord. I don't question your judgment. You just had other plans. Well, at least we'll stay in one place for four years. Oh, her hair is bright for her hands, like a charwoman. They say she doesn't know how to sleep in a bed. I hear she deserted her children. Oh, the roughest, commonest creature I ever saw. She's a disgrace to the White House. surprised at you. I'm sorry, Zach, but I can't help it. Everybody whispering and laughing and the things they said about me. Oh, bosh and Tommy Rod. Oh, no, Zach, they're true. I am a disgrace to you in the White House. I'm crusty and worn like an old soldier. <laughs> Meg, you're the first old soldier I've ever wanted to kiss. Oh, Zach. We're too old for this sort of thing. Why, Meg? 
Lovers never grow old. I know these next four years are going to be hard. But if you'll stand by me, you'll come through this, this skirmish just like we came through all the others. And then, Meg, then we'll go back to Cypress Grove together. All right, Zach. This one more skirmish. And then we'll go back home to Cypress Grove. For good. Grin. Everybody's watching you. Smile. Meg, I'm no play actor. I look like a theo. All right, now you're mad enough to spit because your cabinet's been investigated for fraud. And it's not true. Well, of course it's not. You're going to prove it when the time comes. Now, now sit back. Got to make your speech next. Put your hat back on. I got a kind of headache. Well, you shouldn't let that sun beat down on your head. Meg, I can't lay the cornerstone of the Washington Monument with my hat on. It's, it's disrespectful. Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States. Say your piece fast, Jack, so you can put your hat back on. Ladies and gentlemen, it is indeed a privilege to place this stone, the cornerstone of the monument to George Washington, our first president. It is my earnest hope that as the years go on, this nation will prove herself worthy of the sacrifices that have been made for her. That we, as a people, will reach onward and upward, just as one day this marble pillar will reach toward the sky. Beach, I, I didn't know. Jack, Jack, what's the matter? I, I'm feeling, feeling bad. I'm dizzy. You're shaking like a leaf. I, I, I guess the sun will... Oh. Oh, Henry, it's you. Yes, ma'am. I'm about finished packing. Uh... Thank you. Thank you, Henry. Yeah. Hard to believe that old Rough and Red is gone after only one year in office. Yeah. Yes, it's hard to believe. Yeah. You want me to pack that little rocking chair for you now? I could fix that squeak if you want me to. No, no. No, Henry. And please be careful with the chair. It's full of precious memories. Where will you be going now, Miss Taylor? Back to your kinfolk in Kentucky? No, Henry. No, to Cypress Grove. Zach and I planned to go back there when this skirmish was over. But uh, won't it be mighty lonesome for you? A lone man. Lonesome? No. No, it won't be lonesome. Because somehow I feel as if Zach's there right now, waiting for me. So that's where I'm going. You see, I always said to Zach, Whither thou goest, I will go. And where thou lodgest, I will lodge. Forever and a day. Agnes Moorhead will return to our cavalcade microphone in a moment.
Now, here is Gain Whitman. It'll be a long, long time before anyone ever again hauls off and gives an automobile tire a good swift kick. Now we pat them lovingly and say, good tires. And you've heard that the new tires on their way to you now will be even better. Why? And how much better? According to Tire Review, the trade magazine published for tire men, truck mileages were increased 10 to 33 percent during the war by rayon cord tires. 15 to 53 percent more mileage has been reported by bus lines. Army proving ground tests showed 24 percent average superiority for rayon on desert roads. Rayon shows 45 percent more resistance to blowouts. The heat resistance of rayon tire cord means longer tire life and a tire good for two, three, even four recaps if you want them. Some tire men believe rayon cord tires will last longer than most first owners drive their cars. Cordura high tenacity rayon yarn for automobile tires was first developed by the DuPont Company and used experimentally on heavy duty trucks as early as 1938. Now it is also being used in larger sizes of passenger car tires. But DuPont Cordura is not the only reason your new tires will be better. Improved synthetic rubbers will be blended with natural rubber in tire threads. One manufacturer has announced a tire made entirely of synthetic rubber, which he says outwears any tire of natural rubber. Right now, inner tubes of DuPont neoprene rubber are being made by rubber manufacturers. Neoprene, among its many other unusual properties, holds air many times longer than in tubes made of natural rubber. With tubes made of DuPont neoprene, you won't shorten the life of your tires, even if you forget to have your air pressure checked every time you stop for gas. These new tires and tubes that are on the way aren't just rubber. They're chemistry, too. Dozens of compounds developed by DuPont for the rubber industry will help to give the new tires and tubes their strength, their endurance, their resistance to heat and sunlight and the oxygen in the air. Cordura, rayon, yarn, neoprene, and rubber chemicals occupy important places among the DuPont Company's better things for better living through chemistry. Agnes, oh, Miss Moorhead. Yes, James. Have you seen the new Metro Golden Mayor picture, The Green Years? Yes, I saw a preview of it, and it's wonderful. Let me give you a tip. Don't miss it. All right, I won't. And let me give you a tip, Agnes. Be sure to listen to next week's cavalcade. The story's called When Cupid Was a Pup, and the locale is a lighthouse off the coast of California. Oh? Cornell Wilde would be our star. It's an interesting and heartwarming story, Agnes, and it's well worth listening to. Well, in that case, count me in. That we will, Agnes. And now we may thank you for being with us tonight and delivering such a magnificent performance. Thank you very much. And good night. Good night. <laughs> for tonight's DuPont Cavalcade was composed and conducted by Robert Armbruster. A Cavalcade play was written by Priscilla Kent from an original story by Kate and Howard Phillips. This is Tom Collins inviting you to listen next week to When Cupid Was a Pup, starring Cornell Wilde. On the Cavalcade of America, brought to you by the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.